Hi again to our travel advisor partners and a marvelous May greetings from all of your friends here at the Royal Caribbean Group. This week also includes Travel Advisor Week, so a special call out to all of you for that. These days, my life feels a bit like Groundhog Day. Remember the movie? Every day is the same, yet every day is different. In fact, every day feels like a week and every week feels like a month. The part I have the greatest difficulty with is dealing with the changing goalposts. One day we're all convinced that this is the right thing to do. And a few days later, another announcement comes out and what seemed so right a week ago now just looks crazy. I really recommend the movie to you. It may be a bit nostalgic, but it's a true classic. Besides, what else are you doing? Actually, there's been a lot of news over the last week or so. We seem to be just passing the peak and hopefully we're starting on the downward slope. Testing has significantly ramped up and is now running steadily above 200,000 tests a day. That's really great news, especially if it keeps improving. There's also been positive news about treatments for the disease. There are even positive reports about a vaccine. But there are also setbacks. Various of the statistics have gone the wrong way. And for every positive report on therapies or preventatives, there's a negative report. Personally, I think this points to one of the defining characteristics of the current situation. There is no silver bullet which will magically destroy this horrible infestation. On the other hand, there is a cornucopia of smaller actions which taken together can bring it under control. The key statistic is what the epidemiologists called the production number, often referred to as R0. And that tells how many people one infected person passes the disease on to. If the reproduction number is two, that means each infected person infects two more people. They in turn infect four, they infect eight, and so on. The result, literally, is an exponential curve. Now, the objective is to reduce the R0 to less than one. For example, suppose you had a reproduction number of 0 0.8. If 100 people were infected, they would only infect 80. They, in turn, would only infect 64, and so on. The result is that the number of infected people would fairly quickly decline to very small numbers. That's the goal, and we're making progress. Now, there are various estimates of the reproduction number of COVID-19, but it's generally believed that the number is greater than two. Unchecked, it will infect a lot of people very quickly. But that's where the cornucopia of smaller actions becomes relevant. By undertaking these smaller actions, we reduce the reproduction number and thereby corral this disease. So far, isolation and social distancing have helped bring the number down quite quickly. But so will more testing, better tracking of infected cases, better treatments for the disease, and improved medical facilities. Combined, all of these smaller actions will have a huge effect and control the spread. Ultimately, a vaccine is the best way to limit the spread, and fortunately work on vaccines is proceeding very quickly. The point is that each day we see more and more progress on this front, and that is reducing the reproduction number and thus bringing COVID-19 under control. We're not there yet, but every day seems to bring us just a little bit closer. And as we get closer, we can switch from focusing on only isolation to focusing on the other components of that cornucopia of actions. That's why we're seeing communities begin to open up, slowly, gradually, but they are beginning to open. Nobody wants to see society reopen more than me, but we have to do it methodically. Our confinement has accomplished what we hope, but we don't want to lose all that we've accomplished by relaxing too soon. While every day seems endless, it's amazing to see how quickly the last month has passed. And I stand by my statement that the difficult of time will also seem to have passed more quickly than we think. But what do we do now? Life is very difficult. Everyone, large businesses, small businesses, everyone is hurting. We are having to make tough choices, and we see every day how much pain and how much suffering this situation is causing so many people. 
Our businesses are hurting, but so are the millions of people whose livelihood has been threatened or destroyed. I believe that our society's response to this aspect has been better than many other crises in history. But it isn't enough, and the consequences are going to be with us for a very long time. So how does this impact our role as a cruise company and your role as travel advisors? Our role is to do everything that passion and ingenuity can offer to keep our ships safe and healthy. Our guests are off our ship. We still have crew on ships who want to go home, and we're working feverishly to overcome all the travel barriers to do that. We believe we found ways to finish that imperative and expect to complete the process shortly. Looking forward to restarting, health and safety are absolutely paramount. As I've said before, what was fine just a few weeks ago is no longer adequate. Good enough just isn't good enough. We need to raise the bar to new heights, and we have teams of doctors, of scientists, of epidemiologists, and teams of people who know our business all looking hard and charting the safest and the surest path forward that we can. We also need to support you, the travel advisors, who bring us the bulk of our business. We, in fact, essentially all the cruise lines, are protecting commissions and finding other ways to support you. I would highlight RCL Cares as an example of that. It's already provided guidance and support to almost 7,000 agencies. Your role is to continue to provide support and expertise to your clients. I've heard some advisors express concern that the cruise lines may view them as less necessary in a post-COVID world. Balderdash. As we recover from this pandemic, and we will in the blink of an eye, your support your relationships, your ability to inform the public will be critical to our future. So please continue to nurture those relationships and continue to hold us accountable for supporting you during these weird times. We're in this together, and together we will make it through to the other side. The world may be different when this is behind us, but some things never change. And the most important of those is the power of friendship and of relationships. So let's get there safely, and let's get there together. Let's go on to better times from there. And one last thing, it's still important to wash your hands.